With a webhook, you can integrate just about anything. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. In a previous video, we talked about how we could use webhooks to trigger automations in Home Assistant. But the reality is you can do a whole lot more with them because you can use a webhook to pass data to Home Assistant, which means you can take any outside service and integrate it with Home Assistant. So in this video, I wanna go through a couple of examples. The examples are edge cases, but I think they do a pretty good job of illustrating what you can do with the webhook and the potential for automating the boring stuff. Anyway, let's start with how this will work. If you recall from my previous video on webhooks, a webhook is just a dedicated URL that's hosted by your Home Assistant instance. In order to interact with this URL, you need to use the HTTP POST method. By default, your web browser uses the GET method, so if you try to access this URL using a web browser, you're going to get an error. This is because the Home Assistant webhook is a one-way trip which means you can only send data to Home Assistant. You can't use the same webhook to pull data from Home Assistant, which means in order to use these webhooks, you need to be able to use the post method when you interact with these URLs. One way is you could use the iOS Shortcuts app or Tasker on Android. Both of these apps have actions for interacting with web URLs using the post method. I don't have an Android device to show you how this works in Tasker, but I can show you how this works in iOS Shortcuts. First, we need an automation because that's where webhooks start in Home Assistant. And for that, we jump into automations from our configuration menu. Here, I've set up a simple automation. The trigger is webhooks and trigger ID is send underscore a underscore message. So if we're using our local Home Assistant URL, the webhooks would be HTTP, the IP address, colon 8123 of our Home Assistant instance, slash API, slash webhook, slash send underscore a underscore message. And for action, we're going to call the notify service for the Home Assistant mobile app. And for the message contents, we're going to use a template. We want to print the contents of trigger.json.message. When this automation fires, we'll have access to the trigger entity, and we're going to be sending JSON to this webhook, and we'll just use the key named message. Think of message as simply the name of a variable that will store the value of our message. This may not make a lot of sense now, but hopefully it will here in just a minute. Okay, now we need to flip over to the iOS Shortcuts app. Here, we're going to define a new shortcut. The first part will be defining our webhooks URL. In this case, our webhook URL that we just mentioned. Next, we'll use the get contents of URL action, but we need to hit this show more button. Here, we can change to post, and for the request body, we leave it JSON. Then we add a new field. Key will be message, since that is what we put in our automation in our trigger.json template. And for value, let's put coming to you from shortcuts. Now, when we run this shortcut, it will post some JSON to our webhook and Home Assistant will take whatever we passed and put it in a notification, which looks like this. You could add as many key value pairs as you wanted to this shortcut and Home Assistant would have access to all of them in the automation. And since we can use templates throughout our automation, we could get really crazy. For example, let's say we wanted to use this shortcut to turn on a switch. In our automation, we just add an action. Since we're going to be using a template, we have to use the YAML editor. But for the name of the service we want to call, we can use a template and then just access the JSON key service. For the entity ID, we'll be looking for the JSON key entity. Then in our shortcut, we just need to add the key service and set the value to switch.turnon. And for entity, we set the value to switch.front underscore porch underscore light. And now when we call this shortcut, the front porch light will turn on. The ability to pass data through a webhook gives you a ton of options if you haven't already figured that out. For example, in the iOS shortcuts app, you could build a shortcut that opens up your navigation app, sets your destination to your house, and then lets Home Assistant know that you're on your way home, which then could be used in a notification to your family. Or like we did in the light example, pass the name of a service and then an entity you want to use with that service. The beauty here is you don't have to hard code some of these values in your automation. You could simply pass them to Home Assistant via the webhook, which means you could build some really complex automations using a trigger that comes from outside Home Assistant. 
But iOS Shortcuts really isn't a good example, because the Home Assistant mobile app on iOS provides a ton of actions to the Shortcuts app. So let's talk about if this then that. Okay, honestly, I dropped if this then that from my smart home when they moved to a subscription model. But prior to that, I used their service to call webhooks in Home Assistant to integrate quite a few of their services that didn't have direct integrations with Home Assistant. In the days following their announcement, I either moved those integrations to other methods or dropped them altogether. But if you're not opposed to if this then that, then their service really does give you the ability to integrate quite a few services into Home Assistant using webhooks. Here, we're going to set up an automation that anytime I create a note in Evernote with the tag has, I want to get the title of that note in a notification. Not super cool stuff here, but this pattern would be the same for any of the if this then that services. First, we need an automation. For a trigger, we're going to select webhook. And for a random reason, I picked ifttt underscore webhook as the name of my webhook. Depending on how you plan on calling this from if this then that, this name may not matter. Just don't use spaces. Then for action, I'm just gonna call a notify service and send a message to my phone. In this case, I'll just use a new note colon followed by a template that will simply get the value of the key message that we're going to set up on if this then that. Again, if that doesn't make sense, just hold on. Now, if your Home Assistant instance is public, then skip ahead to the next section. Just remember that your webhook URL will be your domain name slash API slash webhook slash whatever name you assigned it in the trigger. But if you're using Nabucasa, I suggest letting Nabucasa host your webhook. To turn that on, head to configuration and click on Home Assistant Cloud. Then scroll down to your webhooks. Find the one with the ID you just named in your automation and flip the toggle. You'll get a URL. Copy that someplace. You'll need it in a bit. Now head over to if this then that. Log in or create an account and then log in. Either way, the point here is you need to log in. Once in, click create. Here you get to pick any service you want. For this, I'm going to use Evernote because it's easy. If the service needs to be connected, you'll need to do that. If it's connected already, pick your trigger. For this, I'm going to use add a specific tag to a note. And the tag I'm looking for is has. For that, choose webhooks. Our choice here is a pretty tough one, but I think we'll choose uh, make a web request. And now we get to the good stuff. URL is either going to be the domain version you created earlier or the Nabucasa URL you copied. If you've been paying attention, you'll know method. For those that just walked up, post is the one you want. Content type should be application slash JSON. And we can ignore additional headers. Additional headers here could be where you put an authorization token, but we don't need one for this. And body is where the magic happens. But unfortunately, this is one of those things that isn't all that intuitive. We're going to want to put this body in JSON since that's what we set our content type to. JSON is a way of formatting text and its format is in key value pairs. To use it, we'll want to do curly brace, double quote, then the name of our key, which in this case is going to be message, then double quote, colon, double quote. Then we need to supply the value we want to send to Home Assistant. You could add your own value here, but in this case, we'll click the Add Ingredient button and choose the one we want to send to Home Assistant, which in this case is title. This will put the double curly brace, title, double curly brace. Then we'll finish it with a double quote and a single closing curly brace. And that's it, you wrote JSON. In Home Assistant, we'll be able to use that variable or key message to get the value. Before you go have a celebratory beverage, if you wanna send more than one value, you just have to put a comma in between the key value pairs. So after title, we could put a comma, then double quote the key entity for the name of our key, double quote colon, double quote switch, dot front underscore porch underscore lights double quote this way home assistant would have access to two variables each containing different information but since we're just doing a basic test here we'll leave it with just message now to trigger this we'll need to open evernote and create a note and give it the tag has and when this webhook gets called we should get a message on home assistant with this title we could wait for if this then that to see what we did or we could flip back over to if this then that and click check and on our phone, after a second or two, we get our message. 
Now, this was a very basic example, but I hope you see the power here. Any service in if this then that that could be used as a trigger could then call a webhook on your Home Assistant instance. From there, you could pass your own message or pass an ingredient that exists from that service. And if this then that is not the only service you could use this with. I had another example that I wanted to show you using Zapier. Or is it Zapier? I, I don't know. But what I do know after spending a Sunday trying to get good useful content for this video is that it's like a fancier version of if this then that. And way more powerful. But with great power comes great complexity that sometimes makes you want to cry. One of the things I dislike from the Google Calendar integration in Home Assistant is that Home Assistant doesn't have any awareness of your daily agenda. But Google Calendar does send you an email every day containing your daily agenda. My brother pulled that data into Home Assistant using Node-RED to read that email. And I suspect that will probably be my first adventure using Node-RED. But I decided to do it using Zapier so that I could show you what was possible in the context of this video. The idea was to have Zapier connect to the Gmail account where those emails are going, read the email, clean it up, format the text, and then send it to an MQTT topic so that my daily briefing each morning could have that information to read to me. And I got close. I mean, the data is going to MQTT. Although getting it cleaned up and in the right format to have text-to-speech read it has been a challenge. And honestly, I'm a Zapier noob. So after some crude remarks regarding its intimate relationship with its mother, I gave up. But I did want you to know there is potential for using webhooks with Zapier just in case you're a Zapier fan. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.